Should we be a Gen Zer for this video? Ew, I need freshly washed hair for this. Maybe Gen Zers wash their hair every day because they don't have anything else to do. Hi, I'm a millennial. Oh, hello, it's nice to see you. You probably just saw my book haul video or if you didn't and you're watching this one first, you can go over and look at my book haul video. I just realized that I had way too many videos that needed to go up at the same time, but I didn't plan for this appropriately. So welcome to my wrap up, you guys. I actually was about to like put them together, but my book haul ended up being a lot more books than I thought, whereas my wrap up is like, not that many books that I've read this year. I mean, hey, I had a reading slump the very first like two and a half weeks of January. So forgive me. Did I add up all my stuff? I'll be right back. Okay, so I finished my stats. I read a total of four books in January. By the way, this is my stat page. Yeah, we love it. I'm gonna be coloring the months and but since we're only on January, I didn't color the months yet. But I read one physical book, three books in combos, which I think I do, wait, I think I do like a voiceover for this, right? Okay, put in the voiceover. Okay, now we're into our January stats. I decided to make these really, really cute graphics, so I hope you guys really enjoy it. So as you guys can see, I have combo listed. So all three of those books, The Perfect Child, The Wife Upstairs, and For Better and Worse, I both listened to and read the physical copy. Then I just read the physical book of Member of the Family, and I didn't have any just audio or eBooks. For the books that I listened to, For Better and Worse and The Perfect Child, I did listen through Scribd and then The Wife Upstairs I listened through Libro FM which I do have a discount code for both of those things down below so you guys can check those out if you're not familiar with them. I didn't listen to any books from Libby which is my library app and I didn't have any from NetGalley. And then as far as where I got the books from I bought The Wife Upstairs. I swapped for For Better and Worse. I borrowed The Perfect Child actually from Jesse, and Member of the Family I got from the library. As far as my ratings go, so the member of the family was a five star. The perfect child was actually just a four and a half, but I still included it in my five star rating. And then for better and worse was a four star and the wife upstairs was a three star, but I didn't have any two or one stars this month. So that's great. For my genres, I had three books that were thrillers and one book that was nonfiction and that's about it. So I was definitely in the thriller mood for this month. And then as far as authors go, all four of those books were all new authors to me. So that was actually pretty cool. I know you guys love that. Okay, but I do have this page, um, fave of 2021. Um, so I'm gonna put like my favorite book for this. I did not get a chance to print off my little cover thing for January, but my favorite book of uh, January of 2021 would be Member of the Family by Diane Lake. And so that is the Charles Manson book. So I also have this spread. Um, and if you wanna see my whole bullet journal setup, like I do have a video, I'll link it here, but it doesn't have obviously the pictures in it yet because I hadn't read anything at the moment. Um, but yeah, so this, I have like a whole blank, like a bunch of them, six pages or something like that. So these are the four books I read in January. I also have pages in my like month, like my January setup. And I do have like a February setup, which I will link also. And I show you a whole flip through of my January. Um, but anyway, I did a whole page per each book. So like, this is my page for when I read member of the family and I write down like favorite quotes. I do write a little bit of stats, but I usually write out my thoughts now while I'm reading throughout the book if I can. And if not, I just write like a really big review. There's the perfect child and then for better or worse and the wife upstairs. And I am loving this. If you guys aren't doing this, you should do this because this is the first year I'm doing it. I am doing it for the rest of my life. I'm also really excited for like when I keep my bullet journals, I'll be able to look back at what years I read what books. I mean, I know like Goodreads and the story graph like does that, but it's just so cool to have actual my handwritten like what I was thinking and feeling at that moment. These are the reviews I'm putting on like the story graph, um, but it's just cool to have it like handwritten, you know? Maybe my kids will read the same books and go back and be like, oh my gosh, like mom, grandma, can't believe you read this thriller with all of this stuff in it. No, I 
actually probably won't care. <laughs> okay, so the first book I read was Member of the Family. This I did for my Reading Rex Sent by You video series, which if you don't know what that series is, it's where you guys get to actually like send me a video recommendation or a book recommendation, but through a video. So you just film like a little like 30 to 40 second clip and you're like, hey Jackie, I want you to read this book. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. And then you're like, yeah, this is why. And I'm like, ooh, let me go pick that up at the library. Oh, and then I do a whole vlog reading about it. So my first one went up, it was a success and I loved filming it. I loved reading the book. It was so cool. Penny did an amazing job recommending it to me. And so you can definitely check out that video. I'll have it above and down below for you guys. But I ended up reading this book five stars, spoiler alert. So this book was 384 pages. It is a true crime memoir, nonfiction cult book. That's the important part, cult book. It is an adult book. It was written in 2017. So I knew within like 20 pages that I was going to really like it. And then by like the first 78 pages, I was pretty sure I was going to rate that book five stars. Like that's how good it was. Now there are tons of trigger warnings for this book because this is actually about Diane and her life with like grow from when she was growing up to when she was 14 and becoming part of Charles Manson's family, actually cult. And she got out like around when she was like 16 or 17 and ended up putting him in jail. So this is like her, like how she became part of the cult, what happened in the cult, things she was doing at that young of an age. And like, yes, she was doing things at a way younger age. Oh my gosh. 60s and 70s was a crazy time. I do go in way more detail like in my actual reading vlog and kind of talk about like, okay, how are people brainwashed into a cult and lots of different things. So I'm not going to talk about that here in this wrap up, but just so you guys know, it was a five-star read and I do want to read a quote. This is from page 236. She said, but that's what it means to be in a cult. You lose a part of yourself to someone else or to the group so that your entire mind no longer belongs belongs to you. Nobody chooses to be in a cult. So I did learn a lot about being in a cult from that book. I learned a lot about what type of people kind of like, not that they seek out cults intentionally, but it seems like the same type of people that seek out religion. Don't hold me to that. I don't know everything, but I really liked it. It was super, super dark. Lots of trigger warnings for like everything, murder, sexual assault, uh, like just so many. I think I did put all the trigger warnings on my story graph, which if you didn't know, I do have a story graph now and I do have a video of me setting it up. I have lots of videos in this video, so just check out all the videos down below because I probably don't have another card to give you guys. But if you wanna go follow me on the story graph, I do put the trigger warnings in there because it's a lot easier than writing them all out on Goodreads and I'm trying to transition over to the story graph. Okay, so obviously we know that that was a great book. If you like nonfiction, if you like memoirs, if you like cults, if you like true crime, Definitely go seek that one out. The next book that I read, actually the next three books that I read were for a reading vlog that I did. It was reading Jesse Stump's favorites. So reading with Jess is her name here on booktube. And again, you can go check out that video if you want like super in depth. But the first book that I had read for that was The Perfect Child by Lucinda Berry. This book I gave four and a half stars. It's 364 pages. It's the thriller horror genre. Like uh, it's an adult book written in 2019. So this book I really liked because it was very thrilling. It also talked about foster care and infertility, which I loved the rep for that. I thought it was very honest and real. And this is about a little girl who was abused by her mom and she ends up going into foster care because they found her like starving and stuff. And these, hello, yes. Reminding me of my dentist appointment. Okay, um, where was I at? Oh, foster care. So yeah, so these uh, foster parents decide to take her in and they're even thinking about like adopting her. But anyway, if you read Baby Teeth, it kind of has a little bit of the same premise, but this one's way better. So don't just cross this off because you read Baby Teeth. The little girl kind of acts a little bit different with the foster dad compared to the foster mom. And she's actually very naughty and kind of a little evil for the mom. And let me just tell you my experience in foster care, which yes, I am a foster mom and I did have a couple experiences so far. Um, but the major one, 
I talk about in a video on my main channel if you want to check that out. And my experience was very similar to how the mom felt in this book. I mean, obviously I wasn't fearing for my life like she was, but it was very, very scary. And I feel like that's why I did really like this because I felt like I related to Hannah as the main character a lot. But the infertility rep was really awesome. So on page 85, she said, I can't ever give up my dream of being a mother because no amount of disappointment is worth giving up what it feels like to be a mom. On page 91, she said, I grieved the loss of my faceless babies. I did it alone because Christopher didn't understand. No man understood what it was like for a woman not to have a baby to hold. And I just really, really liked these references throughout the book because I felt like, yes, this is definitely a book that's not painting like the woman that's dealt with infertility in like a negative light like so many thrillers do. This one actually had actual quotes of like, yes, this is what it's like. Like you're not just like a crazy person that goes and murders people. I feel like that's what all the thrillers do. So I really did like this one. The only reason I didn't give it five stars is because I felt that the ending should have been a little bit different than it was. I was waiting for a really big twist at the end. This book did have, like, it did keep me reading and listening. I thought it was very fast paced um, and it did have a little twist throughout, but I was waiting for like a big twist at the end and that's not really what I got. So that's the only reason why I docked a star, but it was very, very, very good. So I definitely highly suggest it for those of you that love thrillers. Okay, then the next book that I read for that video is For Better and Worse by Margot Hunt. This book I gave four stars, it's 336 pages. It's a domestic thriller. It is an adult book and it was written in 2018. This one I did read and listen to all in one day. Even though I gave it four stars, it was still so good. And I gave it four stars just for like my own personal reasons. I could definitely see other people giving it five stars. This one also talked about like foster kids, which was very interesting how like I read three books this month that all talked about foster kids. But this one is so much better than the synopsis makes it seem like. Like there's so much more going on. This is about, what's her name? Natalie. So Natalie is a defense attorney. And when she was like dating her husband, it was like their first date. They were joking about how they could get away with murder because they're a lot smarter than the criminals and she's a defense attorney and stuff. Ha ha ha, whatever. Well anyway, fast forward, um, we find out that there is a foster boy that's like 13 and he goes to the same school as their 11 year old son. And they find out that the principal of that school is being allegedly accused of like sexually assaulting this or abusing I'm not sure what the correct term is but sexually abusing this 13 year old but a lot of people are like well this 13 year old is a foster kid and he's really damaged so he's probably lying about it because he starts fires in the school and just all of this bunch of crap. And a lot of other people know the principal like on an actual friendly basis, like so does Natalie and her husband. So they're like, okay, um, yeah, it's probably like the naughty foster kid. But obviously since the accusation has been made, like the principal like can't be at the school anymore and there's like an investigation happening. Fast forward also then Natalie is deciding to murder somebody that she's really mad at. And that was super intriguing, like reading about a criminal defense attorney, like planning her own murder. And she's like, okay, I'm gonna do this differently so I don't get caught. I'm gonna do this because if I do it this way, I'll get caught. But if I do it this way, I can probably like slide through. I loved that, like that amount of detail in planning a murder was so incredibly cool. So I really, really liked it. The only reason why I rated it four stars instead of five stars is because I felt like the ending was tied up very pretty and not messy. And I wanted a messy ending for what the story was all about. I feel like it should have ended differently. It was still a fantastic read. I think a lot of people would like it. If you like more like crime legal thrillers, I think that you would like this. This is like a light crime legal thriller. And if you don't like them, because I don't really like crime thrillers at all, I feel like this is a good like little stepping stone to kind of like read something that was very interesting to read about with her planning the murder and knowing, you know, about being criminal defense attorney without it being like overly with all the like legal jargon and all that boring stuff that they usually put in there. So this was like a really good domestic slash crime thriller, light crime thriller, let's say. Okay, and last but not least, 
The last book that I read for this month was The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins, and I did read it for that reading vlog. This I only gave three stars. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, it was 304 pages. This is like a Southern Gothic thriller. It's an adult book. It was published in 2020. I think Book of the Month published it in 2020. This book, though, I was definitely underwhelmed by. I did not think it was that great. This is a retelling of Jane Eyre, and I haven't read Jane Eyre. So a lot of people said that everything I really like didn't like about it is actually like the Jane Eyre story, but I thought it was way too predictable. Like it's called the wife upstairs. So we all knew the wife was already upstairs. And apparently in Jane Eyre, the wife is upstairs. So I don't know, it shouldn't be a thriller. It's more, it, it's almost like more like contemporary, just Gothic. Is that, a, is that a genre? I don't know. We're gonna make it one. So this is also like Jane used to be a foster child back in the day. She's an adult now, but anyway, she's broke and she moves into this like rich neighborhood so that way she can walk all the rich people's dogs. And while doing that, she also uh, like steals all the rich housewives jewelry, but she meets Eddie who is a widow and he kind of like got all of his wife's fortune. So he's a rich widow. We all want one of those. Anyway, she unexpectedly like, I guess falls in love with him. I never know if the love was real, but anyway, they're about to get married and all that kind of stuff. And his like past wife, was like friends with this other lady and there's like this whole relationship that's going on over there, but they both like died and went missing years ago. The wife's memory of everybody is like floating around, like all of the housewives and everything still talk about this lady, Brie, B, I think it was B. And so like Jane is like constantly like, oh my gosh, like they won't shut up about B all the time. Anyway, the things that I didn't like were the timelines were really confusing. I thought that B and Blanche were, gosh, they just always felt like the same person. Like they're not the same person, but I just always got them mixed up. Like don't pick two B names when you're doing a book. I don't know why people do that. They like literally pick two names that sound the same or have the same letter. It's like pick something that's like super crazy, like Edith and Barbara. I also didn't care or connect with any of the characters, which was much different from the past two thrillers that I read because I did really care about those characters a lot. I felt like the ending was really lazy um, and I just thought that there was no twist at all. Like I just thought it was like pretty plain and boring. I'm not gonna remember what this book was about like in a couple weeks. So you're welcome for me doing this wrap up like while it's still kind of fresh in my head, but I'm sorry, that's how I felt. I know some people did really like it and maybe it's because like Jane Eyre is a classic and I don't like classics and so maybe it had that classic vibe to it. I don't know. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I'm sorry, I feel like I have a lot more energy in this video. It might be because like I actually got ready today and I have the next three days off. So yeah, I'm gonna be productive. I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you guys very soon in another video. Bye everyone.